a nice little lightning rod here at 24. Oh, baby. I mean, oh, how could you rank him? He's never played in the NFL. I don't know. I don't know what we should do here. I guess we should just leave him out. Since he's going to be the starting quarterback of a team, we shouldn't put him out there, even though he hasn't played it down. Oh, that's right. I mean, he's freaking awesome. So he's making my top 40. Kyler Murray, yeah, the number one pick of the draft. I don't give a damn if I haven't seen him play a snap in the NFL. I already know that there's a handful of things he does better than most quarterbacks in the NFL. So we just got to back off that dumb crap like that. I'm so sick of hearing that. He's never played in the NFL. Okay. I mean, at some point, we got to make a projection here and, and yeah. go with it. And there's a reason he was the number one pick. It's because people saw special things. Right. You know, and he's a guy that I got on here and – Man, I mean, you know, he could be the kind of guy where if we did another list in week 16 of the year, he might be in the top 10 because he has that type of talent. Or thinking about other lists, what if this list was you're not ranking the quarterbacks, you're ranking which ones you would want to have the most for the next five years? Ooh. So people might be up in arms. He's at 24. If the list had that title, what quarterbacks do you want running your offense for the next few years? He's certainly going to be in the How top high? 10. Top 10? Definitely, Yes. I mean, just, you know, youngness, you know, that he's not even, of course, not even in the prime of his career. And then the athletic attributes and the skill set that he has. Hey, the reason he was drafted number one is because there's just not been a lot of people in the history of the NFL that have come in with, you know, what he can do on the field. Yeah. He's Barry Sanders at quarterback. I mean, you wouldn't, he you wouldn't know, be one of your top five? I mean, he might be. I, 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 be yeah, I, was being, I was being conservative yeah. I, because I was like, ah, I haven't thought about that. So I just said it. But you're right. It might be top five, really. Yeah. I mean, um, what you concerns heard, do you have? I, we, we're all so excited about yes. his potential. What concerns? One, and it's the same one, and it's the size thing. And it goes to this. And it's not, I'm not worried about, oh, can he see over the line right. of scrimmage? I'm not worried about when he scrambles and gets in the open field, he's going to take big hits. I've already seen he's amazing at avoiding that stuff. He doesn't even take a chance of letting people clean him out like that when he runs down the field. Now, what I worry about is it's uh, week four, okay? And, ooh, he's playing a defense that's kept him in the pocket, okay? Mm -hmm. And, man, he got smashed a few times this game. And now it's week five, and all of crap. It's another good defense he's playing, and they kept him in the pocket, and he's getting smashed a lot in the pocket. You know, this is not a big human being to where I go, okay, that next week, what are we going to see? Is this guy going to be able to physically hang in there again, or is it going to start to affect what he does in the pocket, decision-making, because he's going to start going, man, I don't even feel right this week, right. and I'm so beat up that I can't take that beating. And now I worry about when you get that in your head, all of a sudden there's, there's a guy, oh, there's a guy open. If I just got to stand here and take, oh, man, I'm so beat up. I'm not going to take that hit. I'm going to throw the check down. Right. Does it start to affect decisions and things you do that way? That's my number one concern. But, like, really gifted thrower, really gifted passer, quick release. I, you've heard some of the things out of Arizona already. Throws a spiral or every throw. Yeah. Makes throws that make us say, wow. On the run, some of the things he can do throwing the football, mm -hmm. there's only a few people ever that yeah. can do what he can do. Right. I mean, ever. It's up there with Rodgers, Mahomes already for the type of throws he can make on the run scrambling around. And playing in the pocket, I was just, I, as you know, I was so impressed with what I saw at Oklahoma. Going back to some of the conversations I had at the Combine with people that were – Kind of in the know and also part of the decision-making process. W would we take this guy if he's available? Yeah. And one of the comments that, that came up. Yeah, no I'd like to hear this. Team, yeah. No matter the team be like, well, you've got to be willing to change a little bit about what you do yes. offensively. Take that a step further. Think about what the defenses are doing at OTAs and minicamps right now in the NFC West. Mm -hmm. If you're in San Francisco, if you're in Seattle, yeah. if you're in L.A., right. don't you have to take a little bit of time now to cater toward playing against this guy to think about – the kind of way he might stress your defense that it hasn't been stressed in the past. Yes. So hasn't he already affected, and I'm just guessing here. Yes. Don't you suppose he's already affected the defensive coordinators and OTAs and minicamps in the NFC West? I, 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 yeah, 100%, Paul. And it, it might not be like they might not be coming out and going, hey, we're working on Arizona Cardinals stuff today. But, but they'll just infuse it in practice and won't tell anybody. Like, hey, we're going to have a read option period today in practice. They might not say it's for Kyler Murray, but in the coaches, they've already had a meeting and go, hey, hey, f***ers, we play Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray. we yeah. got to do a few periods every right? now and then just to keep yeah. brushing up on our rules and things like that. So, yes, I would think he has already taken effect into, you know, people are breaking down Cliff Kingsbury and going, okay, what's he going to bring to the table here in the NFC yeah. West to where teams have started to study that. And then, yes, go into, well, we 
have to study the running quarterback factor to another degree this year because we're going to play a guy that's going to yeah. be able to do things. I think he's the most gifted runner we've seen. He's more gifted than Lamar Jackson was coming out of Louisville, and I cannot believe I'm saying that because I thought, wow. whoa, Lamar was a really gifted runner. But where Kyler Murray's different from the rest of these guys, I think Kyler Murray's the best in space that I've ever seen as far as, like, breaking ankles, right? It's truly like a third-down running back. Even Michael Vick, who's the greatest runner ever at the quarterback position, it wasn't breaking ankles. It was just – blazing speed where you're like, oh, Mike sees a seam and he's the fastest guy in the field. And he's just going to outrun everybody through that seam. Right. And as it closes up, he's just going to keep squeezing through and yeah. go. Kyler Murray not, might not be that straight away fast, but I think he's quicker than the rest of these guys. And I think that's where it's going to be a lot of fun to watch him too. And thinking about all these defensive coordinators and what they're doing or what they should be doing or thinking about in the NFC West, it's different than all the other divisions because I'm just picturing it right now. If you're inside the San Francisco 49ers building, yeah. you're playing Russell Wilson twice right. a year. You're playing now Kyler Murray twice a year. Right. And Jared Goff is doing things differently with yeah. the boots and the play action. Right. I mean, that, that is a unique job because there's a lot in the NFL right now that looks the same. Yeah. To be honest, I know. the guys are great, the coaches are smart. Right. There's a lot of same. Right. Those offenses not in the NFC West are no. not the same. You're right. They are not the same. I mean, and Schottheimer talking about we're going to be a running team again this year. He made a comment like that this week. You know, they want to play smash mouth football. Yeah, you talk. Hey, if you're not on this 49ers and you're one of the other teams, you got to worry about, man, that zone scheme that Shanahan runs and then the play action passes off it. Yeah, you're talking about the same kind of things with McVay. And then you go, yeah. oh, the screens and the boots. And they're so amazing at all that, let alone the talent they have. And now, damn, Cliff Kingsbury, we got to worry about that aspect coming into the, the division. So, hey, they NFC West is an exciting division this year. It really is. It can be – this could be the year it's, there's two playoff teams. I wouldn't even be shocked if we went here and go, man, San Francisco, Seattle, and the Rams, they all made it. I mean, they have the type Where of team the on paper. Where right now? They're going to bring up the rear. I think they're going to be one of those teams that's like 4-12, and 5-11, and 11, but like – Tough out. Tough out. Exciting A lot of out. exciting yeah. games, right, where we're going to go – Oh, man, that was an amazing game to watch. You know, Kyler Murray was amazing in the fourth quarter, but, you know, their defense or Kyler Murray made a mistake late in the game to where they lost 38-35 or something like that. I think they're going to have one of those type of years. You've they're not there yet. Right, exactly. Yeah. You've already confessed that there's been, you know, there's, there's changes, right. especially 20 through 30. Yeah. We get 10 to 20. Did you change this at all? What was Kyler initially 27 you bumped him up. Was he initially higher? So, you know, I can't do that yet because he hasn't played. I, I thought he was another tough one because I had – I was like, man, am I going to really put him in front of Joe Flacco, Super Bowl MVP quarterback? And they, those are the things I say to myself. Who you still like and believe I in. Still I still like tell. and believe yeah. in. Man, and Andy Dalton, who I, you know, again, has done a lot of good things. I sat there and went, hmm. Man, am I being, is that just wrong and disrespectful? But the more I thought about it, I said no. You know, I'm purely confident that they were in the same systems – the same team, right, and everything was the same around him, that Kyler Murray would be the cream of the crop with some of the guys he's behind, and he would rise above, and we go, yep, he is, the, he is the best thrower. Oh, he is the best scrambler. Hey, he's the starting quarterback for our team. And ultimately, I think that's what led me to it. But, yes, never easy. I question right. myself all the time. I, 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 even at times I go, I call my dad at times. Because I'll go, Dad. What did your dad say when you had Kyler 24? He goes, oh, oh man, oh, you're going to get some blowback well, about this? You're going to get some blowback about that one. But, uh, yeah, I think you're right. I'd probably put him there, too. Yeah. You know, so he, he agreed with me. But sometimes I have to have the conversation with Dad just because I need somebody to talk it out with. Sure. And go, hey, Dad, I'm, you know, here and here, and I'm thinking this. And, you know, he might bring up a few points where I go, ooh, you know, that's a good point, Dad. I am going to move him up one more spot. Or I just go, eh, no, you're wrong, Dad. I'm right. Forget right. you. I'm going to do what I want to do. <laughs> right. But it's good to talk it out regardless. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.